Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. The reason why we call this non-standard is because we have an exponential function on the left-hand side, 2 to the power x squared, and we have a polynomial, 1 minus x to the 8th power, on the right-hand side. So we can solve this analytically, but we're going to solve it in a different way. We can definitely guess and check and see if there are any possible solutions, but that doesn't prove there are no more solutions or the number of solutions. But we can do a couple different things here. Anyways, first of all, we're going to start by guessing. And I'm pretty sure you already guessed it. And sometimes equations have no solutions. That's also a possibility. Not for this one. So x equals 0 works. Why? Because if you replace x with 0 on the left-hand side, you get 2 to the power 0, which is 1. If you replace x equals 0 on the right-hand side, you get 1 minus 0, which is equal to 1. So they check. So x equals 0 is a possible solution. Is a possible solution. How do we find other solutions, if there are any other solutions? So we're going to look at it from a couple different perspectives. Um, we're going to use a little bit of calculus, but don't get scared. We're going to differentiate, and there are rules to do that. So set f of x equal to 2 to the power x squared. And then at the end, I'm going to show you the graph, but let's go ahead and check something first. I'm going to differentiate this. To differentiate a number to a function like x squared, or it could be 5x plus 1, or cosine x, we are going to write the same thing. And then multiply by the derivative. This is the chain rule the derivative of the exponent, which is 2x, and then multiply by ln 2. We kind of need a correcting factor because the base is not e, Euler's number, so we have to multiply by that. In the case of um, e as a base, ln e becomes 1, so you don't have to worry about it. So this is our derivative, but what makes it more interesting is set the derivative equal to 0. So we're kind of looking at the points where our function has a horizontal tangent, possibly, if it does. And setting the derivative equal to 0 actually helps us do that. So from here, this can't be 0 because it's always positive. This can't be 0 because it has a certain value. So the only thing that can be 0 is x equals 0. So from here, we get x equals 0 as the x value that makes the derivative equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and make a table. I know some folks like the second derivative test, but I like the table because table kind of gives us a better idea, in my opinion. f prime and f and x, those are my rows. And 0 is going to be our critical point for f prime. And then I need to find out, this is kind of like, you know, uh, interval method. So what are the signs, plus or minus signs? So here's what we're going to do. Looking at the derivative, if x is positive, this is positive, this is positive, right? Because uh, 2 is greater than 1. Our derivative is going to be actually positive, right? f prime is going to be positive. So we're going to start with a positive sign here. And if x is negative, our derivative is going to be negative. Now, this has a lot of good implications. The sign for the first derivative tells us if the first derivative is negative, our function is decreasing. Otherwise, it is increasing, all right? So now, this means we have a minimum at x equals 0. Great. And I'll show you. When I show you the graph, it's going to make more sense. And the minimum is at 0, 1. Because if you replace x with 0, you get y equals 1. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other function. Set g of x equal to 1 minus x to the 8th. And then from here, the derivative is... Now, the derivative of 1 is 0. It's a constant. The derivative of x to the 8th is 8x to the 7, but there's a negative 1 we have to multiply by. So it's negative 8x to the 7. Pretty easy, right? If you know the rules. Now we want to set it equal to 0, and we get x equals 0. The same value we got before. That shouldn't be a coincidence. So let's go ahead and make a table with this one, too. So I'm going to put the x here, g prime, and g here. And our critical value is, again, 0. So what are we going to do? We're going to find out whether g prime is positive or negative to the left of 0 and to the right of 0. So if you look at this derivative real quick, if x is positive, right, then the derivative g prime is going to be negative, right? Because we have a negative sign. If x is positive, x to the 7th is going to be positive, negative 8, 
multiply by that is going to be negative. So we kind of have the opposite situation here. We're going to put in a minus sign and a plus sign, indicating that our g is going to increase here and decrease here, making a max at x equals 0. Is this again 0, 1? Yep, it is the same point. Because if you replace x with 0, you get y equals 1. That's actually why uh, x equals 0 was a possible solution, because you get the same y value. In other words, those two graphs intersect. Make sense? Great. We can also look at it differently. We can kind of have a different approach here, such as look at 2 to the power x squared, right? x squared is greater or equal to 0. That means 2 to the power x squared is always greater or equal to 1, right? We also know x to the 8th is greater or equal to 0. That means negative x to the 8th is less than or equal to 0. If you just add 1 to it, right, 1 minus x to the 8th is less than or equal to 1 because you're adding 1 to both sides, not subtracting, right? So what does this tell you? We have two functions that are supposed to be equal at a point, but one of them is always greater or equal to 1. The other one is always less than or equal to 1. So they, they can only intersect at the y equals 1 value. But that's not the solution. They just have It just says they have to intersect at 0, 1, right? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we're just going to wrap it up. Here we go. Graph both of these functions for you, and I just want to say a few words about the graph. First of all, 2 to the power x squared. If you graph 2 to the x, you're going to get something that goes like this. But when you have 2 to the power x squared, for even for negative x values, you're going to get... Um, you know, larger uh, y values. It's kind of like a reflection. It's not exactly that. Obviously, we're not kind of dealing with the 2 to the power absolute value of x. The values are going to be different, but it's kind of similar. It's not a parabola, but it's a curve uh, that's kind of u-shaped, right? 1 minus x to the eighth is uh, kind of like a, it's pretty straight. Uh, it's not straight, but between, um, you know, negative 1 and positive 1, the y values change very slowly, and then all of a sudden they're just going to shoot up, but in the negative direction. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.